Well, hello, hello. God bless you. It's your girl, Benita. And welcome to our final mini session of talking about how self-care is God's idea. I'm going to go ahead and turn my music off and we're going to talk a few minutes about our soul. You know, I have found out that most of us, you know, we can very easily Google information in reference to how to take care of our body and even um, how to take care of our spirit. But very few of us know about how to take care of our soul. Some of us don't even necessarily know that we have a soul or that our soul is something different from our spirit. But our soul is different from our spirit. Amen. Our soul is an invisible place outside of our spirit. And the soul is composed of three parts. We have our mind, we have emotions, and we have our will. And the soul has a very specific way that it needs to be kept healthy. Amen. When you think about it in contrast to the spirit, the spirit needs to be filled. But the soul needs to be emptied. What do I mean? Well, the spirit needs to be filled with prayer, the word of God, praise and worship, in order for it to be built up. Amen. But the soul, on the other hand, needs to be cleansed, decluttered of counterproductive thoughts and emptied of emotional toxins in order for it to be healthy. Amen. So there are separate places, even in the scriptures in 1 Thessalonians, Thessalonians 5 and 20 through, it talks about how now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your entire spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless. Amen. So the soul is a different place. And because we have an intentional God, God has a purpose for our soul. Amen. And we're going to talk about that a little bit. And we're going to talk about how we can make sure that our soul is healthy. Because that's the location where the enemy can attack us in the area of depression, anxiety, and also suicidal ideation. So when we talk about our soul, I have learned that our soul was created to function as a vehicle to reflect two ways, our love to God and our love for God. Amen. So it's a vehicle to reflect our love to God in that through our meditations, through our um, feelings of love, through our thoughts, our perceptions, and our choices, we are expressing our adoration to God. And then God uses that vehicle, our soul, to advertise for him and for his kingdom. So it's supposed to be through our attitude, our demeanor, and our decisions that we attract other people to God. By the way we conduct ourselves, the choices that we make, the way that we talk to people, the way that we allow our voice tones to be, the way we handle and, and express ourselves to build collectors, come on somebody, to our children, um, even when someone is getting on our nerves or something, what are we doing? How are we expressing that? Amen. To be able to be angry and sin not. All of that has to do with our soul. It has to do with thinking a certain way. It has to do with allowing our emotions to be bridled, but also confessing to God, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes, to make sure that we're not repressing um, negative emotions. So um, I want to let you know that God expects for us, not others, not him, not himself, um, to care for our soul. It's our responsibility. There's some things in our relationship with God that he's going to do exclusively. Other things we do exclusively. And some things are a collaboration. God will help us. And you're going to see that in a minute because he helps us by releasing his spirit to flush out toxins when we admit to God that they're there. But it's our responsibility. Amen. So if we look at that real quick, um, how do we maintain a healthy mind? Well, we have to do the work. Amen. It's not going to be through someone's prayer. It's going to be through us 
actually doing the work. We have to do the work of renewing our mind by examining our opinions and our thoughts and evaluating them with the truth of God's word. You know, we may have grown up on a lot of um, different cliches or different um, old wives' tales or what Grandma Susie told us, um, you know, while she was making our breakfast. And a lot of us based our lives upon those philosophies. But we have to get to a point that we begin to evaluate, mm -hmm. is this... Does this have substance in the word of God? Is it substantiated by the word of God? Sometimes we have cultural things that we hold on to. Amen. And say, well, that's just how it is because I, you know, because of my culture. But if our culture and the word of God conflict, then we have to let go of what our culture is saying and embrace what God is saying. So we have to do the work of renewing our minds. We have to do the work of refuting anything that is contrary to the word of God. We have to recognize that our truth and opinion must match God's word or we must deny it. Amen. If our truth is not equal to God's truth, it has to go. And we have to only receive thoughts and philosophies and meditations that can be supported or substantiated by the word of God. God tells us you. You think on everything that's honorable, that's just, that's pure, that's lovely, that's commendable, that's excellent, that's worthy of praise. God tells us you cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. You bring it into captivity. Amen. And so we have that responsibility to do that. Of course, we need help. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. To help us to think about what we're thinking about. We need help to realize that, wait a minute, that's not me or that's a way with thought and I need to address it. Amen. And we also need to have healthy emotions. And I learned this much later as I was going through um, classes in emotional healing. And I want to thank God and give a shout out to Pastor Sacre Alone who taught me this of Alpha and Omega Christian Ministries. This is where I learned about this decluttering of my emotions. Never heard of it before until I went there and she taught us how you're not supposed to just hold this negative feelings on the inside of you to repress them or just to explode with them. A lot of us think I'm going to give her a piece of my mind and we really think that we've released um, the negativity out of our soul, but we haven't. The, there's still clutter there. Just because we told somebody off, that does not mean that that negativity is gone anywhere. And, and certainly if we were repressing it, we're holding it in because a lot of us don't know honestly how to deal with conflicts. And so our emotions are all over the place. And those are areas, these are the types of things that we need to be learning and applying to our lives as believers. So how do we declutter? Well, first of all, when the Holy Spirit, and we have to hook up with the Holy Spirit, and we're going to have a prayer in a few minutes about that. And in order to declutter, as soon as we are aware that there's negativity, there is anything other than the fruit of the Spirit that we feel on the inside. If there's anything other than joy and peace, you know joy and peace lives in you already. It's the fruit or the attribute of the Spirit of God that lives in us. Amen. Joy lives in us. Peace lives in us. And if we're feeling anything else, then we have to know that I need to get rid of that. Amen. So I'm going to acknowledge that, um, you know, w that it's there. I'm going to um, acknowledge if I've, I've repressed it or expressed my emotions. I'm going to talk to God about whatever the situation is. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pour out. That's where I'm going to cry. That's where I'm going to, you know, raise my voice or whatever. I'm just telling God about what's going on with me. But that has not removed it, nor has it resolved the issue. Then I'm going to ask God for wisdom after I have done that. But I've got to also admit to God that that negative feeling does not belong on the inside of me. Okay, so I have to thank him for flushing out each negative feeling from my emotions by his spirit. And then I thank him for restoring my soul 
to its original intended intended place of joy and peace. So I have a negative feeling. I'm saying, God, she really got on my nerves. You know, I'm just telling God about it. Blah, 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 blah. You know, God, I don't know how to handle this situation. I need your wisdom. But God, while I'm waiting for your wisdom, this feeling of irritation, this feeling of frustration, this feeling of anger does not belong in my emotions. So I thank you. I'm, so I confess that to him. And then I thank you, Lord God, for flushing my emotions uh, or this negativity out of my emotions by your spirit and restoring my soul to a place of joy and peace. Amen. So that is what God wants us to do. Um, there are a lot of other things and more details that I could give you, but I'm not going to do that. If you want um, a set of these videos, you can email me at unshackledfromdepression at gmail.com. I'm going to leave the email address down in the comment section. If you are a person who would rather have in a print form, um, I just recently um, wrote a book call strategies for family members and church leaders of depressed anxiety filled and suicidal christians called how can i help them without hurting me that's the actual title of it okay it's strategies is to help christians to learn how to approach how to handle how to minister to those who are depressed and filled with anxiety or suicidal without hurting themselves emotionally Amen. If you're interested in, in that book, you can email me. The, the thing of it is the information that I shared today, uh, there's a lot more detail with charts and graphs and um, examples, and all types of things in this book. And it has the information that we talked about today. So we're going to get ready to close out. We're going to recommit ourselves. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. We need the help of the Holy Spirit to help us to know what's going on in our soul. We need to know how to respond to negativity that's going on in our soul. We need to be able to speak back to the enemy. When the devil drops a negative thought in our mind and the Holy Spirit makes us aware of it, we need to speak back to that. Just like Jesus showed us in the wilderness. Depression is a spirit of heaviness that is um, defined in or um, given the reference in Isaiah 61 and 3, the spirit of heaviness. And anxiety is a derivative of the spirit of fear. We can be equipped. We don't have to be depressed. We don't have to be suicidal. We don't have to be filled with anxiety. The enemy may offer it to us, but we don't have to embrace it. But you need to know how to do those things. I go over that information, amen, um, in this book that I just finished talking to you about. Or I also have many videos on um, um, Unshackled from Depression and Anxiety YouTube channel. I want to invite you to go there and look at them. And if you feel led, you can certainly subscribe. But we're going to get ready to pray. Amen. And then we're going to rededicate ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Rededicate our body, our soul, and our spirit to God. Amen. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Let's, let's begin to pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your throne right now. And we thank you, precious and all-powerful Holy Spirit. We thank you that you live on the inside of us. And we invite you to help us to be conscious of what is happening in our spirit, our soul, and our body. Help me. To be disciplined, to spend quality time with you, separate from seeking you pertaining to matters of the church or your people. Help me to become more intimately acquainted with you and grow through studying and applying your word. Help me to make wise choices about what goes into my body and how I care for it. For it. Lord God, my body and every part of me belongs to you. I also invite you to help me to be aware of the thoughts and the motivations behind them when they land in my mind. Help me to detox my emotions regularly and to be wise in the decisions that I make concerning what I choose to think, feel, and do. Spirit of the living God, we invite you to realign anything 
that is not advantageous for us personally on every level. Father, we embrace you. We embrace the manifestation of your power, your presence, your counsel, your discernment, and your nudging. We receive the total ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. That was a prayer that I read that's also in the book. We need to receive from God. You know, the Holy Spirit um, placed on my heart a song as we begin to close out. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Come on and sing it with me. Yeah. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a Sanctuary, Lord, for you. Come on and sing with me. Come on. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Yeah, God. Pure and holy. Try, try. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. Let's sing it again. Come on. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Yay, God. Pure and holy in my body, my soul, and my spirit. Tried, tried and true. With thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Yes, God. Lord, for you. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for joining me for the entire season of all of our many seed teachings. God bless you. Love and kisses. Yeah. Try.